Good morning, learners, and welcome to KCSE Chemistry Practicals. Um, this is an area that uh, we all know is very important if we are going to do well in our chemistry exam. So what I'll be trying to do here, I'll be trying to take you through the or to expose you to the techniques that we require to be in a position to handle our uh, practical. So, uh, in my first series, I'll be taking you through qualitative analysis. Now, qualitative analysis basically has two, or can be divided into two. We have the inorganic chemistry that basically deals with the analysis of salts. And number two, we have organic uh, qualitative analysis that basically deals with the organic compounds like the alkanes or the saturated hydrocarbons, the alkenes and alkynes, what we normally refer to as unsaturated hydrocarbons, and then we have alkanols and alkanoid uh, acids. But um, with, uh, therefore, with inorganic here, when we talk about the analysis of salt, basically we are trying uh, to look at the test of anions and cations. Now, as I take you through this here, I'll be able to explain a few, uh, I'll be trying to explain the observations and more so I want us to really get, I want us to really get how we record our inferences and also how we can make a conclusion from the observations. Now it's important to mention here that when we talk about observations, we are talking about the things that we can be able to sense or what we can actually be able to note with our five common senses, we talk about what you see, what you hear, and basically sometimes you may even be required to touch, maybe to explain uh, or to describe a solid. Now, with inferences here, there's a deduction that we make from the observations. Now, so uh, follow me here and we look at uh, what we are talking about. Now, the instructions here, you are given solid K. And with this solid K, the first instruction is to dissolve it or is to add the water. And I'm not talking so it's not automatic that it may be dissolved, but you're supposed to add the water uh, to it. So let's go. So we have my uh, boiling tube with you here. We have a solid K. So we're going to add the water. We are going to add water. Now, whenever we add water, what we need to observe is whether the soil dissolves or otherwise. Chances are it dissolves or does it not dissolve or it dissolves partially. Now, as you can see here, my solid has dissolved. My solid has actually dissolved. Now, the other instruction here is to divide it into five portions. Let's do exactly that. We divide it into five portions. We divide it into five portions. And there we are. Now, let's have a look at the first. Now, before we get to the other one, now, uh, let's look at the observations. Let's look at the observations. Of course, we've already noted that uh, uh, the solid has dissolved, therefore, solid dissolves. That is the first observation. Then, it's also important to mention about the color of the solution. Therefore, we're going to mention here solid dissolves, uh, forming a colorless. A colorless solution. That's what we're talking about. Now, let's go to the inferences. I want us to think about this now. When a solid dissolves, what deductions can you make from that solid? Uh, it goes without saying that uh, that solid is soluble, therefore, you're going to have soluble, salt, pleasant, soluble, salt, present, soluble, salt, present. Now, again, Think about the colorless solution. Think about the colorless solution here. Now the solution is colorless. What does this one imply? This one implies 
that the colored ions are absent. Yeah, we can also go ahead here and say colorless solution. Now, colored ions absent. Colored ions absent. Now, these properties here, you have to mention. You have to mention them. You have to mention them. And here we have uh, copper ions, which is two positive. We have iron two positive. And you have iron three positive. Now these ones are actually absent. These ones are actually absent. Now um, copper ions basically the solution of copper ions are blue. The solution of iron two are pale green, and solution of iron three ions are yellow. And therefore, uh, when the solution is colored, that means that those ions. Are actually absent. Now let's move on. We have to the first portion. We're going to add like two nitrate followed by nitric five acid. So I'm going to have my first portion here, and I'm going to have my lead nitrate, my lead nitrate with me here, and I'm going to have I'm going to add it there. I want you to observe here. A quick precipitate has been formed. You can actually be able to see that. And then I'm going to add nitric five acid. That is the instruction. You can see on addition of acid, the solid is not dissolving. The solid is not dissolving. Therefore, let's get to our observation. Let's get to our observation. Now, therefore, you don't have the first thing that you observe here is a white. Uh, precipitate formed. Now, and what we also see here, on addition of the acid, the precipitate did not dissolve. Therefore, we can improve there, which does not dissolve. On addition of nitric acid. Look at that. That's not the sole organization of 95 acid here. So, um, remember here, the instructions were two. It is always important to make sure that whenever you give them two instructions, you're going to have um, two observations because that is what the exam expects. Now, the importance is for this. Now, in the last particular case here, we have precipitate forming. Now, this one here, you realize that lead ions can form a precipitate with carbonate ions, with sulfate ions, with chloride ions. I repeat again, lead ions can form a precipitate with carbonate ions, sulfate ions, sulfate ions, and chloride ions. Now, but among us the four, among us the four precipitates formed, that of carbonate and sulfide will dissolve on addition of acid. But in this particular case here, the precipitate did not dissolve. That means, uh, we can say that sulfate ions and chloride ions are present. Because the precipitates, the lead sulfate and lead chloride here, does not dissolve on addition of acid. But, the lead carbonate and the lead sulfate here dissolves on addition of acid. That's what we're talking about. So basically, we can have, by now we can be able to tell that that solid K has either sulfate ions or chloride ions. Now let's get to the other procedure. In the other procedure, we are going to add barium nitrate. So I'm going to have my uh, second portion here and I'm going to add barium nitrate. Walk with me again here and you see what we're talking about. You can all see that a white precipitate again has formed. A white precipitate has actually uh, formed. White precipitate forming. Now, um, therefore, we get there very fast. A white 
precipitate is formed. A white precipitate is actually formed. Now, if remember, remember already, remember already we have seen that you only have some protein chlorides. Now, so addition of barium, what we're trying to do here is that we are adding barium ions. Now think about adding barium ions. Now barium ions can form a precipitate. Barium ions can form a precipitate with sulfate ions, but cannot form a precipitate with the chloride ions. Therefore, what does that mean? That this one confirms the presence of sulfate ions. And therefore, we can actually say sulfate ions present. That's what we're talking about. Sulfate ions are present. And therefore, we can actually be able to confirm here. We can be able to confirm that my solid K is a salt of sulfate. It is a salt of sulfate. One of the things that you can actually be able to deduce from here that actually it is a solid of sulfate. Remember in my first procedure, in my first procedure here, I made this a conclusion or my inference was soluble salt present. Soluble salt present. Therefore I have those two, but I have a sulfate that is soluble. Now let's move on here. The other one is addition of sodium hydroxide. Now uh, addition of sodium hydroxide, I'm going to have the other portion. Um, I have my portion with me here. Let me have here. I'm going to have uh, sodium hydroxide. Um, you can see a white precipitate has been formed. Let me put it in excess again here. And the precipitate has actually dissolved. You can see that the precipitate has actually uh, dissolved. Now, um, so uh, we we'll get there, definitely. We get to our observations, and we are going to write exactly that. A white a white precipitate formed. Um, soluble in excess. Now, if you're trying to go back to the effect of sodium hydroxide as far as cations are concerned, now every time you add sodium hydroxide to a solution, and a white precipitate form, obviously the white precipitates are hydroxides. The white precipitates are hydroxides. Uh, that are insoluble. Now, this, uh, this insoluble hydroxide, on addition of sodium hydroxide in excess, if those precipitate, if those hydroxides are amphoteric, what happens is that the precipitate dissolves. Now, the question is, which hydroxides are amphoteric? Now, we have the, the zinc ions. Zinc ions, we have aluminium ions, and we have lead ions. Now, the reason to, uh, to this is very careful here. So far, we have seen that we have a sulfate, and the sulfate is soluble. Now, I want you to think about the sulfate of zinc, aluminum, and lead, and here, this is where we must eliminate lead, because lead sulfate is insoluble. Lead sulfate is actually insoluble, and therefore, the fact that our salt was soluble, that means that the lead ions cannot be there. And therefore, what remains after here, we have zinc ions and aluminium ions. Now, in the second procedure here, we have a addition of ammonia solution. Let's have it. Um, so, we're going to have ammonia solution again with us here. So, we're going to have ammonia solution with us. You can see we have a precipitate. We can have a precipitate. Now, one of the things that you have to realize is, is that the precipitates, you can see the precipitate remains, it does not uh, dissolve, does not dissolve even in excess as we saw in sodium hydroxide. Now, as far as again ammonia solution is concerned, now ammonia solution, uh, in terms of the effect of ammonia solution on cations, now addition of ammonia and whenever you get a white precipitate uh, which is insoluble in excess, uh, basically uh, the inferences of the cations that can behave that way with ammonia solution, we have the magnesium ions, 
we have aluminium ions and we have lead ions. Now out of the three here, yeah, you only realize that we are talking about aluminium ions. Remember we've already confirmed that we have either zinc ions or aluminium ions and therefore we are not going to have the magnesium ions, the lead ions, we only have the aluminium ions. Now let's first of all read our observation. We have a white precipitate. We have a white precipitate uh, is formed here, and here we can say uh, which does not dissolve, which does not dissolve, does not dissolve, does not dissolve in excess. That's what we talk about. And our inference for this one here, we are going to have aluminium ions. Now, if zinc ions was present, what would actually happen here? Is that the white precipitate would have been formed, would have been formed because the zinc ions are able to form a complex ion with ammonia solution. Now, in my last instruction given here, I'm going to add sodium hydrogen carbonate. Sodium hydrogen carbonate. Therefore, I'm going to have it with me here. And I'm going to have it Well, let me let me add some more here so that you see what we're talking about here. I want you to observe keenly. Get closer. Watch keenly what is happening here. This is what we call effervescence. This is what we call effervescence. That's what we call effervescence. That is what we call effervescence. Or what we call Fizzing. Ah, uh, fizzing or cars. Fizzing or cars. Every time you are in a hydrogen carbonate, you expect fizzing to occur. And this one has exactly happened. Therefore, fizzing or cars. Now, I've uh, deliberately put this procedure here so that we appreciate something about the aluminium ions. Now, salts of salt solutions of aluminium ions are normally acidic because every time you, you dissolve uh, aluminium salt or every time you add water to aluminium salt they get hydrolyzed they get hydrolyzed they actually get hydrolyzed and therefore this one confirms the aluminium ions aluminium ions confirmed here aluminium ions confirmed or we can talk about aluminium ions present that's what we're talking about so in my next series I'll be taking you through organic uh, qualitative analysis. Thank you.